I mean, I'd say a good portion of the time people use buzz Yeah, I always call it, I always introduce you as the Because I've got eyes in the back of my head. Why? So, you believe in prophets? I believe in prophets, yeah. And you are good at interpreting dreams? And I, no, I have, I have the gift of interpreting dreams. Artists are, uh, are equivalent to, to prophets. You know, like we have, we have this other ability to see beyond, um, you know, what's, what's here before us. So, I mean, I think artists have a lot of the characteristics and the attributes of time problems. Um, I think that's where I get my ability to read dreams, is that I'm able, you know, I think as artists, we're, we learn to look at pictures and images and, um, and interpret them, whether they be our own or those of society or those of other artists. Like, we have the ability to read, like I went to my friend Nazi's studio, and I actually I took the whole class. And like when I walked in there, like I, I mean I know her, but I I was able to experience that at, without any words, right? Like I'm able to to make connections and, and understand the work solely through experiencing it. So I I think that dreams are the same the same way. It's a series of images or disjointed images, disjointed narratives that have deeper meaning and implication. So is this your neighborhood? This is it. This is the outer fringes of my neighborhood. This is, these are like the factories. So this is the north side of my neighborhood. This is Archer. Hi, Archer. He's named after the main street. Uh, Archer Avenue. Hi, Gary. He's kind of crazy. But he's friends with those small dogs. All right. Here you go. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Right. Are you right. Danny? Danny. Yes. Would you go by Danny? And my middle name is Albert. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's, that's, right. that's my dad's name, Albert. Albert. And I have his name as my middle name. That's what my, I think my siblings called me Albert. They still do to this day. Really? Yeah. Why did they do that? I don't know. You ever go by Al? Not at all. You I don't, don't like, like that? I don't like that. What don't you like about it? So um, I, I do think it's, it's just, just I don't like Albert either. I, I think it's too far. Anybody want to be like Albert? I am. Al is just, it's kind of like vulgar. It's slang. You know, pick up that Al. Hey, Al. That's what my dad would buy. I mean, I don't care that you're insulting my dad's name, but um, no, I kind of like Al. Better than Albert. I don't like Al. Albert is, is is more sophisticated. I don't. I wouldn't use Albert, but there's something sophisticated about Albert. One time, some woman found out my name was Danny, and then she kind of went on to say that she has a son named Danny, but they stopped calling him Danny when he was young. Yeah. No one calls a 30 year old oh, man. Really really Nobody calls him. Yeah. That's what she said. She said, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, we don't call him Dan. Why do we go by Dan? Well, just felt like if I were going to go by so Dan or Dan, yeah. then I was like, yeah. that move is so yeah. distinct. Like, yeah. either I want to be seen as classy or as a man. Yeah. And no longer a boy. Right? Because if, if I go with Dan, I want you to know that like, I'm masculine. And if I go by Daniel, I want you to think I'm classy. Yeah. And I just thought, I'm not making that decision. It's ridiculous. So I'd rather just be sort of More diminutive. Boyish. Yeah. Oh, he's boyish. Yeah. I mean, I think if I had to choose one, I'd choose Dan, not Daniel. Dan? I don't know. I think you made a good choice. And said to Rick, can I talk to you? Danny. I think maybe what you and I do are doing is is more of a collaboration mm -hmm. um, because it's it's blurry like what is yours and what is mine right 
I mean, I feel it feels collaborative in a way because because there is sort of an antagonism in what we're doing, right? So like, you're taking me to undisclosed locations, and then um, I don't know, I'm asking yeah. you really personal questions along the way that are being recorded. But it's on. It's it's. Um, it's on a. It's in your format. I mean, right. it, it, and we broke the. We broke your format at the same time, but mm -hmm. we could still reference it. We could still go back to it. Well, and it's being distributed in that format, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll never have a sculpture to show. A what? A sculpture. <laughs> a sculpture to show. Why a sculpture? Well, or we'll never have like a painting. Like it's always oh. going to be this episode. It's always right. going to, yeah. We don't understand the grander, the grander implications of things. We're just not, not, not. Sometimes I follow this really intuitive uh, thing, and this intu intuition that I that I have. Uh, I mean, I think it was the it was the, definitely the case with the wedding. Like I didn't want to I didn't want to do the the wedding. Like I didn't want to do it, but I sort of had to. So I just like followed all the motions that I felt I needed to follow in order for it to happen. And um, then the day of, it was it was happening. successful event. Um, Why did you not want to do the wedding? I just didn't want, I didn't like all, I didn't want to do all the work that was involved in it. I didn't, I didn't feel that it was worth it to do, to put all this effort into that one day, that one moment. Is that why you enlisted the help of other people or? It could only be, it could all, only certain things could happen if it's just me doing this thing. But once you bring other people into play, I think the meaning more complex, the, the, the thing, the event becomes more complex, the experience becomes more complex, with more people involved. Mm -hmm. And even that, like choosing who will be there, like I sort of have to follow this loose intuition, like the fact that, for, for instance, the Native American guy, like I met him at um, this farm in Bridgeport, Growing Power. Um, I did something there. Uh, they, they invited me to do something for a show at SAIC about sustainability. They invited me to do a dinner there at Growing Power at, in the farm. And he worked there. He was a worker there. And I just met him and I started talking to him and I found out that he uh, was a minister. You know, but just the, the, the idea of Asking him to do it. Would you say that you had a private life very early on? Yeah. Yeah. And you know that I think it was it was lonely. It was sad. And I had to sort of find my way out of that. And I guess I had to also come to grips with it. Mm -hmm. Art was a great, a great thing that helped me through that. Of course, I wasn't, I wasn't really good at, at uh, making friends. Um, I had, I had a really close friend, um, but he would go away in the summertime. There, I would be alone a lot. I would be by myself. And it really wasn't a good time. I, I didn't have tools to be able to do stuff. You know, to be able to. Like doing what we're doing right now, even like I could do this by myself. Like I could have a day off and say, I'm gonna go to this place that I've never been to. Like that's a tool to have, right? Like to know that you could get on a train and go into the city and just hang out at an art museum. Not everybody has that that, um, that tool or that outlet. People don't know that that exists. And I think that at a certain point, I learned those things. And I think that's what I put into practice. I think that's what we're doing right now. I think that's what I do in class. You know, it's this idea that we can make things happen. And in 
they don't even have to be that exciting.